Do you know how to work on geothermal systems? Do you know anything about troubleshooting or replacing a reversing valve? Today we're going to learn how to work on a geo unit. I'm going to help you to troubleshoot and I'm going to help you to understand more about this reversing valve and what you can do to troubleshoot and replace this valve. Hope you're ready to learn. Hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell thing so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. That is a damper for that zone. That's a damper for that zone. And you can see there's a red light where it says closed. And all three zones are closed. All four zones are closed. And that one doesn't have a light. Interesting. So three of them says they are closed. And just set all the zones to cooling and all these dampers should open. Closed. Closed. We shall see. And you can see where that white bar is. It's on closed. So it should be on open when it opens. This one is still closed. This one, you can see, is open. The unit just kicked into second stage. Let's see. Pressures are 150. 70 and 225 170 and 225 let's check this one this one is open hard to get a good clear and then this one it's hard to get a good is open so I got three dampers open one damper closed and my pressure for this geo 50 and then these light and, uh, 50 and about 45 so 42 44 45 yeah about 45 so a five degree difference between the in and the out. So the coaxial is fine, temperature difference, no more than that for this size unit. We're good on that. Because this is a 72, so it's six tons. Okay, so pumps are running. They're pumping. Okay, we got pl plenty of pressure where I put in this reducing valve. Compressor's running. That suction is really high though. That suction is super high. You know, for 410A, it's not very hot in the house. So it should not be. Let me turn this light off now. It's kind of glaring. So that leads me to believe the compressor's bad. 175 and 250. I mean, look how high that low side is. Because the coil's new. Do we have plenty of airflow? Need to find that out. So, checking the coil. There's no condensation. It's cool. It's cold, but it's not, it's not up to par. We should see condensation here indicating this coil is flooded. I don't think it's flooded. I'm going to check superheat and subcooling values and see if this coil is flooded or dry. If it, you know, 175, that's super high suction. I should have plenty of refrigerant, but I could have a TXV issue. No TXV here. Looks like aluminum distributor here. So I can't really take this apart. So, interesting. Temperature clamp on the suction line of the EVAP. Put this up here and slide this panel back in. Oh, that'll stay. Watch this change. This should be probably 50. 78 degrees upstairs, and that EVAP coil is only 65. Mm mm mm. So 65 and about 62, 
three. Hmm. Interesting. So this is the outdoor TXV. This is the condenser, the coaxial, and then I've got a filter dryer. Need to check across the filter dryer, make sure the filter dryer is not the issue. Compressor's getting hot, 138 degrees on the very top. So what's happening is compressor's getting hot, I'm sure, and it's shutting down, and that's what that, why the unit's not cooling. Now I'm gonna check the temperature difference across that filter dryer when it comes on. So 62 and 63, I measured both sides of the filter dryer. Filter dryer is fine, there's no temperature difference there one degree that's it uh, as far as the head pressure we're looking at about 240 saturations 80 so with saturation 80 and 62 that's 18 degrees of subcooling so we got way too much subcooling and we got too much liquid in the condenser section so i'm gonna go ahead and take this clamp try not to burn myself and I'm going to check the vapor temperature coming into the compressor and then check the discharge before it goes off. The vapor is what? Whoa, really high. Oh, it's hot. It's actually hot. Oh, wow, it's 96. That's crazy. check the discharge if I can get on there 140 950 wow so the compressors vapor line has got it's hot so the compressor is getting hot and kicking off so why is that vapor line so hot Wow, 104 degree vapor line. So I think I just found the problem. Check this out. You hear the click? But it's not switching. Reversing valve is not switching. Wow, the reversing valve is bad. So bad reversing valve on the geothermal water furnish unit. And I haven't had one of these and I'm actually excited about it because just when you have a new experience, you learn. And I love learning. So when I seen that the reversing valve was bad, I was like, oh, no, because I just replaced the compressor on this unit. How is the reversing valve bad? I don't know. Maybe it was going bad before and this is what caused the other compressor to fail. That is probably the problem. Also replaced a leaking indoor coil on this one. So the EVAP coil was leaking. Now this is a heat pump, so indoor coil becomes the condenser during the you know, heat pump or the heat mode, and it's the evaporator during the cooling mode. But the reverse valve is bad. How do you know it's bad? It's not switching. Plus, it's sending that hot gas straight back into the compressor. So, not good at all. I'm gonna call the homeowner, give them the price. I hope they go with a new geo. I do not want to replace the reverse valve on this thing, but I will. But I'm glad I had this experience so that you could have this experience. And I hope you've learned from it. All right. There it is. I gotta take that insulation off. I'm laying up underneath the ductwork right now. Got this panel off. Got just enough room to get to this thing, so. I'm gonna start taking that insulation off, go ahead and get the solenoid off. And I'll replace that filter dryer and that reversing valve. Got the electrical panel swung out, so I got plenty of room to get to that discharge line if I can't get to all of it here. Okay, let's get to work. Got some one inch thick insulation to lay on and there's where we're at. I'll show you the new reversing valve, but Glad I got that insulation. It's nice to not have to lay on the floor. Got my setup, scales, my oxyacetylene, my nitrogen low flow regulator, 
and my refrigerant. Got the new reversing valve and the new filter dryer. And I got most of the insulation off, so. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to this now that I'm in here because it's just not a lot of space. And I'm really honestly thinking about doing something I don't normally do, which is, I'll show you here in a minute. Yahoo! <laughs> I'm going to take the discharge line loose first for this reverse valve, and I'm going to do it over there. I'm going to sit over there. That way I can pull with my channel locks that way. Discharge line's loose. Got the discharge line loose. I left that solenoid on there because they sent me a new valve with the solenoid. So now this is the hard part. This is where you got to pull. I usually pull this line loose and then this line loose. And then I pull the middle one by holding the discharge side of that reversing valve. But you can do it different ways. Now, remember when you put the new valve in, you got to wrap it with some type of cloth or some cool gel whatever you've got to keep that valve from getting overheated during the brazing process i got the old valve out of the way and it was not easy got the valve wrapped up ready to install it now i'm going to go ahead and braze the new filter dryer in before i put the reversing valve in because it's it's hard to get to anything inside this little box filter dryer is brazed in Thankfully, now I'm going to braze in the reversing valve. Oh man, this is nice. Ah! In between all my brazing, I've got a bottle of water here, a few holes poked in it, and there's water from outside in a bucket. And I'm hoping this isn't pee. Hopefully, no one peed in this. What I do is I just cool it down even though I got it wrapped with a rag after every braze also something I'm glad I went and did is I went and got the turbo torch because I was having so many problems with my torch tip going out because I end up hitting it on something just put 250 pounds of nitrogen on the system I'm gonna let it set check with a mirror and make sure that all my brazes look good. Although they really don't look good right now because this was actually tough. But I did not end up using my little set oxyacetylene. I used the turbo torch for the larger connections. So much faster, so much easier. Here's the old reversing valve. And I'm gonna give you a tip about taking this thing out. Something I do. So this little half inch connection here, the discharge line that comes in the reverse valve, this is easy. You can unbraze this, pull it right out. The other three connections with the seven eighths pipe, those are a little bit harder. And what I do is I take my channel locks and I take and I squeeze it right at the valve. Okay, right at the valve on the other side. And then I take my snips, takes two hands, and sometimes it's hard to do. Takes two hands usually, but you take your snips and you cut that copper pipe. And the reason I do this is because it's so hard sometimes, especially in this circumstance, to get each one of those off individually by unsweating them. So I'll cut them. I'll cut all three. Sometimes I'll cut two and then un unbraze or unsweat the last fitting. But then you can take and unsweat each one and pull them right off. So a little tip for you. Installed the reversing valve solenoid, got all the wires connected to the high pressure, low pressure switch, got the drain connected. So I'm going to set the pump right here. As soon as I get this panel on, whoa, what happened to that panel? Whoopsies. Okay, man, I'm ready to try this out. Make sure it works. Got that beautiful panel back on, drain back into the pump. Got the electrical control panel back in place. 
Vacuum still going, got my scales ready. Oh, need to take that rag off of the TXV. Here's the solenoid for the two-stage compressor. New filter dryer looking good. All right, I'm gonna put the compressor blanket on and close this panel up. Unit holds eight pounds. Eight pounds and about 12 ounces. It's charged. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn it back on. Power for the unit. Power for the heater kit. Power for the other heater kit. Make sure it's on cooling. Set point 65, that's good. Left that panel off. I wanna measure the temperature of the suction line and the discharge line with my meter. Turning all four zones on. So thermostats communicate to the zone board and the zone board sends the voltage and the motors control those dampers and they open. Looks like that one's open. This one's closed, closed, closed. Okay, now we wait. All right, looks like damper is opening. Okay, that one's open now, and that one's open. Excellent. Unit's about to start. Compressor just kicked on. I'm going to let it set here and run for about five minutes. So glad to see that. 61. So glad. Is this actually? Oh, it's cold. Yes. It's working. 60, 59. Yes. All right, I'm going to measure the discharge temperature now. Now you can see I got my clamp on the discharge line. Pretty good, but I would expect it to be a little bit higher. Okay, it's going up. Looking at my pressures again, 20, 130 and 265. Yeah, that looks good. I'll wait, let it run for a little bit, then try the heating operation. It's 77 down here in the basement. It's 78 upstairs. Let's go check the supplier temperature. Measuring the supplier temperature right above the unit here, 57, so 56, so 21 degrees split. Looks good. Low side pressure, 130 still, and high side pressure, 280. 280. So discharge is 112. take that off and put it back over here measuring the suction line temperature 49 Wow excellent that's more like it before we had that hot gas coming from the reversing valve being dumped back into the suction line <laughs> so and our discharge was like 150 and our suction was like 100. So now our suction is 49, 50, and our discharge is 100. So that's better. I took this panel off while it was running and I put some tape on it because the insulation was coming off, but I took it off because I wanted to get the bottom panel on and, 
Anyways, long story short, when I took this panel off, the unit tripped out and said that there was an issue with the drain. How do you figure out where there's issues at? Usually there's a light right here, this LED light. Like it just kicked out just now, but I think it's going into the second stage and that's why, hopefully. But anyways, I wanted you to know, I took that panel off and said there's something wrong with the drain. There's not anything wrong with that drain. But here's where it was blinking, drain. So it may be that the sensor inside of the pan, when you take the panel off, maybe the air rushing across the sensor gave a false kind of thingy-majigger. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you're getting what I'm putting down here. I'm cycling a unit, turn it back on, making sure everything works, and then I'll be out of here. Pumps are working, so if you can take the burp screws out right here, flathead screwdriver, and then you can push the flathead screwdriver inside to check the rotation of the shaft and make sure it's actually rotating and working. If the pumps are getting hot, check your water, make sure you have water. If you have a pressure difference across the in and the out, check your coaxial, make sure your coaxial is not stopped up. Mm-hmm, I think that's it. Okay, I'm excited. When it kicks back on, if you want to check power to the pumps, you'll go to P1 and P2, see right there? And it hasn't kicked on, so we have zero volts. It's about to kick back on. And we're gonna check the power to the pumps. There it goes. Come on now. 238 volts to the pumps. So they should be running. Compressor's running. I'm going to watch it for a little bit, make sure we're good, and then I'll be out of here. If I had to choose to do this again, or. Oh, it just kicked off. Okay, that's great. Yep, it keeps saying the drain. The drain has an issue. I'm going to pull the panel off and check the drain. Hmm. Pan's empty. Here's our little sensor wire here. Ooh, man, look at all this condensation before we didn't have any of this. It says CO, brown wire goes to 12, P6. What does it mean? Let's see what it means. CO, condensate overflow sensor. What? It says switch, condensate overflow. So this little wire and spade senses the water. The water is the switch. This is normally open, it closes when the water hits. It's dry, the pan's dry. Reset the power, see what happens. Panels are back on, no more drain, light, status is green, and I took out that spade and dried it off and put it back in. Now I'm going to teach you how to better understand the refrigerant flow through this valve and what you can do to diagnose this and be for sure that this is the problem. We're in the cooling mode, so this valve is energized on this equipment. This pipe is always the discharge pipe. This middle pipe is always the suction pipe. It always leads to the compressor, always leads to the accumulator and then the compressor. So this pipe right here carries that high temperature, high pressure vapor from the compressor into this connection of the four-way valve. And in the cooling mode, that high temperature, high pressure vapor goes through this pipe to the condenser. So we're sending the hot gas from the compressor into the valve and then to the condenser. On this geo unit, it was going to the coaxial. Then we have two more pipes. So remember, this is always the discharge pipe. This is always the suction line, the suction pipe. So we have our evaporator carrying that low pressure, low temperature vapor going through this pipe connection and then out the middle pipe connection to our accumulator and then to our compressor. So if you take a thermometer and you measure with maybe a clamp thermocouple, you measure this connection and this connection and you take a temperature reading, you should have a low temperature reading. This, you should have a high temperature reading. This, you should have a high temperature reading. What was happening 
on that geo unit was I had my discharge was I think 150 and my suction pipe was 100 if you go back to the beginning of the video. Now when I finished this pipe was 49 and this pipe was 100. So we still had a 50 degree split but what was happening was the valve was not switching and this hot gas temperature was bleeding back into the compressor line, this suction line here. And if you have a, a thermocouple or a clamp thermometer, you can simply just measure these two connections, the one for the EVAP and the compressor, and you can know for sure, hey, the valve's operating correctly, it's switching correctly, because these are low temperature readings. And then I've got my high temperature reading. And that's how you can better understand if your valve is operating correctly in the field. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you need more training on geothermal units, I've got members only videos to train you on how to use a flush cart. I've got guides I can send you, geothermal training guide, flush cart guide, and a bunch of other videos on my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'll put a couple videos down below that you can check out on how to work on geo units. If you want to learn more about the reversing valve in the heating mode and how the refrigerant flows in a heat pump in the heat mode, I've got a video on how to charge heat pumps. I'll put that down in the link in the description as well so you can learn. If you learned something, let me know in the comments what it was. If you have a question, put that in the comments as well because questions can lead to content. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the viewers, subscribers, and definitely my members. Go check out the members only videos, hit the like button, subscribe, smash the bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.